Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another New York Giants video. And this one we're going to talk about Lorenzo Carter, the outside linebacker for the New York Giants. A guy that I have, you know, for about a month or two now said I believe he can be our leading pass rusher this coming season. You know, not just edge rusher, but pass rusher. The guy that could lead the team in sacks, maybe QB hits, but really in general, just get to the quarterback for the New York Giants, which is something we haven't been able to do on a consistent basis and on a good basis for about three or four years now. And one thing I've noticed amongst Giants fans is that a lot of people are giving up on the guy. Lorenzo is only two years in in the NFL. He's now entering his third year. And I've always said that you don't know, truly know what you have in a player or what you have from a player until they're, you know, they have three years of experience in the NFL. The first year is their rookie year. Literally anything that happens there just does not matter to me. You've seen guys come in, they've had amazing rookie years and then the rest of their careers are trash. You've seen guys come in, they've had a trash rookie year and the rest of their career is amazing. So for me, the rookie year is just like, you know, it's just an experimental year. It, I don't really put much weight into it as I would, you know, other years that they have. Their sophomore year, some guys take a jump, some stay stagnant, some take a step back. For the stagnant and step back guys, uh, it's really referred to as the sophomore slump, and I believe that's what Lorenzo Carter went through last year. He didn't really take a step back. In fact, he showed a good amount of improvement in a couple areas. It's just that his sack, his sack numbers remained stagnant, but I believe he was in a sophomore slump for a couple of reasons. One being he was playing on a bad defense. You know, he was a average good player on a bad defense so that didn't really translate that well another being that he played under coaching that really regressed um for the entirety of the defense you know james betcher's coaching all around and the defensive staff's coaching you could even extend it the entirety of the team's coaching regressed from what they were in 2018 but i think he had a sophomore slump and then the third year that's the year that most players take the time to even out how they play and i think you really get to see what you have for the rest of their career Lorenzo is now entering his third year and I don't quite understand why people are giving up on him He's very young. He's still the same guy that we drafted, you know, a project with high potential You just got to tap into it and develop it and I do think we have the coaching staff now that can do that uh, So let's get into it right now Lorenzo Carter outside linebacker for the New York Giants his 2019 stats He's played in 15 games started 12 had four and a half sacks with combined tackles of 45, uh, solo tackles 25, assisted tackles 20, um, tackles for loss being sixth, 13 total QB hits with uh, one forced fumble. I'm not sure why that's not listed here, but he did have that one strip sack against the Patriots and Tom Brady with the forced fumble that allowed Marcus Golden to run it in for a touchdown. And in general, you look across the board, I'm gonna throw up his 2018 stats now. He did improve, but it's like marginal improvements, right? A half a sack more than he had in his rookie year, two more total tackles than he had in his rookie year, three more QB hits than he had in his rookie year. And in general, I just wanna speak on the QB hits. He had a lot more than I thought he did before I went back in and looked at these numbers, right? And even before I went back in and looked at his tape, which I did spend a good time on. So let's talk about that. What I noticed is that Lorenzo lines up mostly on the left side of the offensive line or in terms of the defensive wording, he's a strong side linebacker. Now, I'm not sure how to feel about that because Lorenzo is primarily a speed rusher. He relies on his speed, his, his finesse, and his agility moves. One thing he definitely needs to improve upon is his strength. And I'll touch upon that a little bit later with our new strength and conditioning coach, Craig Fitzgerald out of Tennessee, who was heralded as the best strength and conditioning coach in college football. So he's somebody that I think could definitely help out Lorenzo a little bit. And he did show promise in three particular games. The games against the Redskins, the Patriots, and parts of the Bucks games. Now, of course, the Redskins game, Lorenzo Carter looked like an absolute beast, as did much of the defense, though, right? That's kind of the catch-22 here. Our, our defense in general looks good against the Redskins, no matter what happens. But in that game, I believe, is what we could see from Lorenzo Carter if the coaching is right and if we could, you know, tap into his potential and get it to spread across the season, he's going to look like he did in that Redskins game. The Patriots game was an incredibly high point in his career and an incredibly high point for the Giants defense in general last year. And at that point in the season, the Patriots offense was, it's not like it wasn't high powered, but it was still one of the best offenses in the league. And our defensive line and linebacking core 
performed extremely well against them. Lorenzo Carter, of course, like I said, he had that sack strip fumble that turned into a return fumble for six points, a touchdown the other way. And he looked like a monster earlier, even on the same drive where he actually had a QB hit on Brady. And once he had that hit on Brady, he was like a shark that smelled blood in the water. And a couple plays later, bam, the sack strip fumble. And speaking of him lining up mostly on the left side, the offensive line, he has, you know, moderate success there, obviously, you know, four and a half sacks, um, not terrible, but definitely not something that I would call good either. I would really like for him to have eight sacks or more. Uh, one thing I noticed is when he's in a type of like a stunt formation where he's lined up right next to Marcus Golden, whereas the right or the left side of the offensive line, they're just right next to each other. And it's just basically those two guys against a tackle or against a guard. Of course, they have really good results. They're rushing the QB really well. They either get a QB hit or a sack. And he also does well on the stunts that are against the inside of the offensive line. So what does this tell me? It tells me the Giants should probably run a bit more of these types of plays, but also move him to the right side of the line more often. Move him to a weak side linebacker more often. He's a speed rusher. I think that speed rushers tend to do well when they're on the weak side of the offensive line. Of course, your best offensive lineman is usually the guys on the left side, you know, protecting the blind side of the quarterback. What I've noticed is that these left tackles uh, they either somehow, some way, keep up with his speed and agility, and their foot movement is really good. For example, look at the Packers game where he played up against um, Green Bay's left tackle, uh, David Bakhtiari, I think is his name. I might be mispronouncing it. Bakhtiari is really good because of his foot movement, and he kept up with Lorenzo Carter's speed and finesse moves. It seems like these linemen are just as quick as he is, and this is a guy that relies on his speed. But what did he do to have some sort of success in that game? The Giants moved him over to the right side, to the weak side linebacker, where he was able to either blow past the right tackle or maybe even power past them, right? So I think they should play him a bit more at weak side linebacker as opposed to put him in, putting him in at strong side linebacker. Now, of course, the whatever edge rusher you have on the strong side is usually the better of your two edge rushers. And right now, Lorenzo Carter is not the better of any of our leading edge rusher, right? I guess if you count Marcus Golden is still on the team, then Lorenzo Carter would be number two, maybe number three behind Kyler Fackrell. I still think he's the best edge rusher we have in the young group, you know, the group that we actually drafted. But when you consider everybody, he's either number two or number three. So why not put Marcus Golden as strong side linebacker and Lorenzo Carter at weak side? I think it would benefit the both of them, to be honest. Golden is also kind of a speed rusher, but he does have strength to him. So that's one thing Carter needs to and can improve upon this year with our strength and conditioning coach, Craig Fitzgerald. This guy, once again, at Tennessee was considered the best strength and conditioning coach in the NCAA by far, and the Giants managed to scoop him up. I believe he can do good things with Lorenzo Carter, get him to get his strength up a little bit, maybe even improve his agility even more so, and then he addresses one of his problems, being that he's not strong enough. Another one pro of the problems I notice is that he seems a little bit hesitant on a couple of plays, right? And what I mean by that is he will take some time to diagnose the play and actually make a move, or he stays like a second or two too long against the offensive line to try and decide what he wants to do. And it's not because he's not exactly the smartest guy when it comes to football IQ. Carter's a pretty smart player. In my opinion, it just looks like he's hesitant. One of the other coaches the Giants brought on this offseason was the defensive line coach out of Penn State to be our new defensive line coach in uh, Sean Spencer. What do they call him? Coach Chaos. What do I expect him to do with Lorenzo Carter? And yes, you guys might be saying, well, he's going to be working on the defensive line, not necessarily the linebackers. I think the edge rushers or pass rushers in general are going to work with all of these coaches. I think they're going to work with the inside linebackers coach, the outside linebackers coach, and the defensive line coach. And I firmly believe that Sean Spence is going to get that little hesitant uh, extra step out of Carter's game and make him go for the ball and just go and tackle the QB. Another person that's on with us is Kevin Scherer. He's our new inside linebacker coach. In 2017, he was Georgia's outside linebackers coach and he worked with Lorenzo Carter. He was the one that basically got Carter drafted in the third round by the Giants that made him be observed by these NFL teams. And Kevin Scherer is one of these guys that had a lot of faith in Lorenzo Carter when he was coming out to the NFL. So I believe him could probably, you know, get on with the rest of the coaching staff, love to know what he did to get Lorenzo Carter tick in the locker room, tick on the field, and improve his game even more. And our new outside linebackers coach is Brett Bielma, 
who was the defensive line coach for the Patriots before, and we all know the Patriots have one of the best defensive lines in the league, so I have faith that Brett Bielma could do something for uh, Lorenzo Carter as well. Now, I did speak upon the things he needs to improve upon, but like I said, he had a pretty good sophomore year, in my opinion, where he had a lot of improvements. He improved in his run defense. No matter where you line up Lorenzo on the field, whether it's the left side, the right side, you put him up the middle, he always gets to the running back and stops the running back. His run defense last year was one of the best by any players on our team. And in fact, one thing I forgot to mention about his strength is that there was a play in particular against the Bills. Like I'm looking over my notes right now and I spotted it where he literally, he got to Josh Allen and he was on Josh Allen, but it's like Josh was dragging him along and he just couldn't get the quarterback down. Just once again, pointing back to the strength thing, he really needs to just put on a little bit more muscle and get in the gym a little bit more because Josh Allen, yeah, he's a running quarterback, but he's still a quarterback. You're bigger than him by like at least 30, 40 pounds. You should be able to bring him down. Something he needs to improve upon. But going back to the run defense, Lorenzo Carter is one of our best you know, run stuffing linebackers that we have. And even though he plays on the outside, he's pretty good when they drop him back in coverage. And the Giants did do that a couple of times last year. In fact, uh, they did that five times where he was targeted five times by the QB. Now, he didn't do, you know, as well as a cornerback would, but he still did pretty good for an outside linebacker. He was targeted five times, allowed three completions, which was actually an improvement for his rookie year. So that's a 60% completion rate when thrown towards him. And I think maybe that could improve if they plan to do that a little bit more with our new inside linebackers coach. And another thing he did, even though he's hesitant, he did become better in diagnosing plays. But Carter is somebody I want to improve this year and I expect him to improve because he's entering his third year. He had a great rookie year where he didn't play that much on the defense actually. He played mostly on special teams. And because of that, a lot of people were excited because he played mostly on special teams and he still got four, four sacks. They had high hopes for him in his second year. Now then, his second year, kind of bit of a sophomore slump. Only improved marginally, a half sack more than his first year, but you gotta consider the, you know, the context. Uh, the, J the James Betcher scheme took a step back. Coaching in general take, took a step back. He played on a very injured defense. If the parts around him aren't operating well, it affects how he plays as well. And also, we were on a team that honestly, after like, I wanna say week eight, the coaching staff in general gave up and the team seemed like they gave up and they weren't really playing to their best anymore so all of that's out the window and now you're entering his third year where i believe most players level out how they play and we get what we get for like the next 10 years or so so carter your time is now man this is going to be your best chance to prove yourself i believe he's going to be out there starting for us i want them to move him to the weak side he he's performing you know average on the strong side but i expect his performance to go up if he's performing against the weak side um, you know against the right side of the offensive line. I expect them to have like eight sacks or so Let me know what you guys think put your comments down below uh, You know what do you think about Carter the coaching staff you think he should move to the weak side like I do put it all down below and I'm out Alright guys, thanks for watching put your comments down below make sure you smash that like button subscribe and turn on post notifications Until next time. I'm out Yer.